The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We have completed chapter 5. Now we'll be discussing chapter 6, Dhyana Yoga, Yoga of Meditation. Swami Chinmayananda says, Meditation is not a verb, it's a noun. It is a state to be achieved and not something you do. So something you do is actually called contemplation. So what we have seen in Bhagavad Gita so far is the conclusion of the first set of chapters. And we are coming to this culminating chapter, Dhyana Yoga, which will indicate the state which we have to achieve. So we have discussed many times that Bhagavad Gita is divided into three distinct sections of each having six chapters. According to Anandagiri, who was a 13th century head of Dwarka Mutt, he said Bhagavad Gita is exposition on the Mahavakya Tattva Masi. The Mahavakya is a statement which connects the lower to the higher, the jiva to the paramatma. Tattva Masi is a Mahavakya in Chandogya Upanishad. And according to Anandagiri, who wrote Tikas on Bhagavan Sankaracharya's Bhashyas. So Bhagavan Vedvyas wrote Bhagavad Gita, then Bhagavan Sankaracharya wrote Bhashya on Bhagavad Gita, and then Anandagiri wrote Tika on Bhagavan Sankaracharya's Bhashya. There he says, this Bhagavad Gita is exposition on Tattvamasi, that thou art. There are other opinions about what Bhagavad Gita is and how it is divided. Madhusudan Saraswati, who was 16th, late 16th, early 17th century Advaitic scholar, he said that Bhagavad Gita is divided into three parts, starting with Karma Yoga in the first six chapters, Bhakti Yoga in 7 through 12 chapters, and Gnana Yoga in 13 to 18 chapter. Swamiji also points out here that there are others who believe that first six chapters relates to the Karmakand in Vedas. Next set of six chapters relates to Upasanakanda in Vedas. And last six chapters relates to Gnanakanda in Vedas. However, Bhagavan Sankaracharya does not make any distinction in his Bhasya. He simply says the spiritual evolution described in Bhagavad Gita follows thus. First, you act in this world with hankering for the fruits. So you are working in the world with expectations. So in, in the first section, Bhagavan says, Hatova prapsasi svargam jitova bhokshase mahim. What do you have to lose in performing any action? You shall achieve either the heaven for the heroes if you die, and if you don't die, you will achieve the kingdom on this earth. When you are expecting a result, that's your motivation. The second stage will be to act without any hankering for the fruits of action, which we have seen as Karma Yoga. And then the third stage in the spiritual evolution is the integration of the mind with Upasana. And the last state, he says, is the realization, acquiring the knowledge. So, so far, what we have seen is, in chapter 1, we have seen the confusion of an ordinary man of this world which we are all. We want to act in this world and get the right results, but we do not know what actions are right. So that's our confusion. Arjuna Visadhi Yuga playing that through the Arjuna's condition. Chapter 2 gives us the philosophical perfection of Upanishads. The highest knowledge in Upanishads was given out right away as the goal. Not that Bhagavan Krishna expected Arjuna to understand, but he gave out that knowledge of perfection, that this self is immutable, imperishable. And at the end of the chapter, we also saw the characteristics of a 
man of perfection, a wise person, how would he act in this world? If you achieve the state of perfect wisdom, then you will have a balanced mind. To achieve that, then chapter 3 gave us the path of Karma Yoga, the method of self-integration of our mind and intellect. That's the second stage. First you act with the desire for the fruits, then you act without desire or expectation for the fruit. So that's chapter 3. And chapter 4 actually gives the various means, Bahiranga Sadhana, the external aids, how to perform Karma Yoga. So we've seen many yagnas in chapter 4. And then chapter 5 gave us a technique, even while working in this world without any expectations, there will be some impact on your mind. To avoid that, chapter 5 gives you the path of renunciation. That you give up the sense of agency for your actions. While performing actions selflessly also, you must renounce your sense of doership. So that's what we saw in chapter 5. Renouncing the sense of agency is the sannyasa yoga, yoga of uh, renunciation. And now all that knowledge, if you have been practicing diligently, then Bhagavan said you are ready for dhyana yoga, yoga of meditation. Swamiji says it's a yoga of contemplation. Meditation is a state to reach. Contemplation is a way to achieve that. So that is dhyana yoga. So you have to prepare yourself with karma yoga to get to dhyana yoga. So chapter literally opens with that statement, Anasritaha karma phalam karyam karma karoti yaha. One who is performing actions without depending on the fruits of actions, saha sanyasi cha yogi cha na nir agnihi na cha akriyaha. One who is performing actions without any dependence Dependence on the fruits of actions, such a person is a sannyasi and a yogi. So Bhagavan is now basically relating both the yoga, which can be viewed as a karma yoga, and a sannyas as one and the same. The ultimate result is one and the same as long as you perform karma yoga without any expectation for the fruits. Nacha niragnihi, nacha akriyaha. This is basically a clarification. Because we carry baggage of our culture. We see sannyasi as somebody who has given up all activities. One who is completely inactive from a society's perspective. He does not have a job, he does not have a family, he has no relationship, he has given up everything. Sannyasi is the one who renounced everything. All means of making living, all possessions, all relationships, including possession of his body. When somebody takes sannyas, he actually performs the last rites. So, the one who has decided to take sannyas, he then wears, you know, saffron robe, he is not doing anything. And Bhagavan said, outwardly that person may have taken sannyas, but if he has not given up this fruits of actions, then he's not a sannyasi. Akriyaha, he seems inactive. But that does not mean he's a sannyasi. Na niragniha, one who does not have fire. So this fire comes from our Vedic culture where every householder will have a fire in his house. Because fire is necessary for your day-to-day cooking, but also for the religious rites. All the religious practices or upasanas were done through fire, yagnas, homas. So they used to continually keep a fire in the house because they didn't have this instant matches or lighters. So they will keep a fire burning in their house so that when they need fire, they can use that to light bigger fire. So a person who is a householder will always have fire in his house. And sannyasi gives up that responsibility of carrying fire. He doesn't need to cook anymore or he also is not performing any religious rites. He is not performing any kind of uh, traditional pujas. Or... Bhagavan clarifies here, a person has given up the grihasthashram, but if he is not 
at a mental level, then he's not a sannyasi. If he has not renounced his sense of agency and fruits of actions, then, then he's not a sannyasi. It's a clarification that the sannyasa is a state of mind, is a state of renouncing sense of agency, ahankar. Is sannyasi. The one who is a yogi is also sannyasi, and the sannyasi also a yogi. In the next verse, Bhagavan says, Yam sannyasam iti prahuhu yogam tam vidhi pandava. O Pandav, that which is said to be sannyasa. Sannyasa is renouncing the sense of agency. Prahu yogam tam vidhi pandava. That is also yoga. So that is dhyana yoga. That which is sannyasa is also yoga. Because without becoming yogi, one cannot become a sannyasi. Nahe sannyasta sankalpaha yogi bhavati kaschanaha. Because without renouncing sankalpa, sankalpa, as Swamiji says, is a difficult word to translate in English, but it's expectations. Nahe sannyasta sankalpaha, one who has not given up expectations. Yogi Bhavati Kastanaha. He cannot become yogi. So one who has not given up a fancy of one's mind. That's why he elaborates what Sankalpa is. It is confusing for us because in our culture, in our vernacular languages, in our religious practices, you always do Sankalpa <laughs> before you start any puja. Pandit will say do Sankalpa. So Sankalpa also means termination, taking a vow. When I decide that this action... I am doing it for this reason. That's a sankalpa. I'm going to be regular in my exercise every day. I'll go for a walk every day. Then we do on a, I guess on New Year's Eve, your resolution. Because you have a goal in mind, you have a result in mind. So that's sankalpa. But Bhagavan says that this sankalpa should be given up if you want to become a yogi. Because sankalpa and result in future, which is exactly contrary to karma yoga. Karma is not to expect any results. Sankalpa is to expect a result in future and then work towards it. There is nothing wrong in it, but human mind is such that sankalpa does not remain constant. And we all know that every resolution we make on New Year's Eve by the time that month is over, we have forgotten about it. And we have some other sankalpa. <laughs> so the nature of our mind is to make a sankalpa for the future, but the action can always be performed in present. And before we start that action in present, we move on to the next sankalpa. We want to do something else. So we will never reach a goal because the goal is constantly a moving target. And that's the fancy of our mind. So to stop that, one has to give up sankalpa. One has to learn how to give up this fancy of a mind. And I heard that you have to learn how to give up sankalpa to get sankalpa siddhi. Sankalpa siddhi in a sense, you are determined to get something, you work towards it and get it. So you make a sankalpa of something which is unattainable. I want to achieve liberation, moksha. It's unattainable right now. But if you make that sankalpa, then first you have to learn how to give up the other fancy of your mind, to give up other sankalpa. And then just work toward the one sankalpa. And then you can reach that. So learn how to give up sankalpa so you can achieve sankalpa siddhi. So Bhagavan here says is that no one can become yogi who has not given up sankalpa. So he's already a renouncer. He is a renunciate, so he is a sannyasi. He has given up sankalpa, he is a sannyasi, and therefore he is a yogi. So yogi and sannyasi are one and the same. And then he gives us who should practice what. Who is capable of inactivity and who should perform actions. We have already seen that inactivity is not an option for us. Nahi kaschit khanamabhi jatu tishtati akarmakrut. It's not possible for any living being to be inactive. But inactivity is the goal. Then we want niskarmya siddhi. We want to retire from our day-to-day life is the goal. So he says, 
ఆరు రుక్సో ముే యోగం కర్మ కారణం ఉచ్చతే కర్మ ఇస్ ద మీన్స్ ఫార్ ఎ సీకర్ ఎ ముని హూ వాంట్స్ టు అసెండ్ టు యోగా హూ వాంట్స్ టు బికమ్ యోగి బట్ హీ నాట్ ఎ యోగి యట్ ఫర్ సచ్ ఎ పర్సన్ ఇస్ సచ్ ఎ సీకర్ హూ ఇస్ నాట్ యోగి మీ ద వన్ హూ హెస్ ద కంట్రోల్ ఓవర్ హిస్ మైండ్ ఇస్ యోగి one who wants to control his mind but mind is not in control yet for karma is prescribed remember we have started chapter called dhyana yoga so we expected that bhagwan will be just talking about dhyana how to meditate what to do we are done with karma yoga now let's focus on dhyana yoga but bhagwan really puts karma yoga at the highest level here and say unless you have practiced karma yoga and achieved the results of the karma yoga which is the control of the mind purification of the mind the next step is not really for you you are still trying to achieve that state your desire is to become a yogi your desire is to ascend to yoga but you are not at a level where you can control your mind and therefore aru rukso ho munehe who is desirous of ascending to yoga కర్మ కారణం వచ్చేది కర్మ ఈజ్ ద బహిరంగ సాధన ఈజ్ ద ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఎయిడ్ నా దర్ సో మెనీ యాప్స్ ఫర్ మెడిటేషన్ కామ్ అండ్ ఆల్ అదర్స్ దట్స్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఎయిడ్ సమ్ పీపుల్ యూజ్ మ్యూజిక్ లైక్ మీ దట్ వర్క్స్ వెల్ ఫర్ మీ విత్ మై టెండెన్సీస్ మ్యూజిక్ ఇస్ అన్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఎయిడ్ ఫర్ కాంటెంప్లేషన్ పీపుల్ యూజ్ మెనీ డిఫరెంట్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఎయిడ్స్ ఫర్ కాంటెంప్లేషన్ ఆర్ మెడిటేషన్ భగవాన్ సైడ్ ద బెస్ట్ మీన్స్ ఇస్ karma perform your actions without any expectations that will give you the control of your mind this karma yoga is the bahirang sadhana external practice to achieve that control of the mind yoga rudasya tasya eva samah karanam uchyate so one who has achieved that control over his mind and he can contemplate for him the aid is shamaha inactivity so we have learned in tatvabodh sad sampatti the six fold wealth sama damaha titiksa shraddha uprama and samadha sama is at the top sama is inactivity of mind sama is controlling the mind so it literally means inactivity so activity is prescribed for the one who is aspiring to be a yogi and inactivity is prescribed to one who has become yogi so once we have achieved the state then only the contemplation of dhyana yoga starts then you contemplate on the reality of yourself who i am and what is the purpose of my life is there a relationship between i and the supreme self which we have seen a tattvamasi that thou art how can i realize that that contemplation requires balance of mind and control over the mind and bhagwan said if you have not achieved that continue performing karma yoga once you reach there then inactivity shamaha karanam uchyate shama is your means to achieve that contemplation we'll stop right here if you find this podcast helpful please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu మా కశ్చిత్ దుఃఖభాగవే శాంతి 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 హరి శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ హరి ఓ